and I am the supreme ruler of everything. As we all know, the world of Avatar The Last Airbender existed in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. That century of warfare brought with it a slew of villains both from among the Firebender forces and from others taking advantage of the chaos to seize power. Avatar Aang and his friends bring the war to an end, but peacetime brings a question of what to do with all those profiteers and war criminals. I'm Kifi Nosi with Wicked Binge, and today we're sentencing the villains of Avatar The Last Airbender for their crimes. We'll begin at the beginning by calling the main antagonist of Season 1 to the stand. Zhao is a commander of the Fire Nation's navy and, alongside Prince Zuko, one of the first to discover that the Avatar survived the genocide of the Air Nomads. His all-consuming ambition to capture the Avatar before Zuko leads him down ever more violent and underhanded paths. Zhao brings several devastating new meanings to the term friendly fire. His pursuit comes to a head in his siege on the Northern Water Tribe, where he captures and kills the Moon Spirit. In one fell swoop, Zhao not only eliminates an entire satellite from the heavens, but also deprives all of his waterbending enemies of their source of power, a move that this court has determined constitutes a form of biological warfare. The blood of Princess Yue is also on Zhao's hands, as in order to save her people, she's forced to sacrifice herself to take the Moon Spirit's place. The murder of a spirit is an especially egregious crime, upsetting the balance of the natural world, so we believe that such reckless disregard for the safety of humans and spirits alike makes this a capital offense. And for that, Zhao deserves to suffer an eternity of torment in the spirit world for his crimes. Obsession cuts both ways in warfare, which is why next we're bringing up Jet. Jet is a leader of a group of freedom fighters dedicated to resisting the Fire Nation's invasion of the Earth Kingdom. My name is Jet, and these are my freedom fighters. As commendable as that goal may be, Jet's methods pose a serious danger to civilians. He attacks and robs an elderly Fire Nation civilian, and even worse, hatches a plot to flood an occupied town and drown all of its inhabitants. We can't win without making some sacrifices. The gang rescues everyone in time, but Jet's on-site hostility toward the Fire Nation isn't diminished in the slightest by this setback. When he and his freedom fighters relocate to Ba Sing Se, they become suspicious of Zuko and Iroh and attempt to expose them as firebenders. It's clear that Jet deserves to be punished for his attacks on civilians, not with the brainwashing that he receives courtesy of the Dai Li, but with a prison sentence carried out by well-meaning authorities that takes into account his age and the motivation behind his crimes. Given successful rehabilitation, Jet might have even had a chance to redirect his efforts into helping Aang and his friends put a stop to the Fire Nation's aggression once and for all, in a morally decent way. As might be expected from Jet's fate in canon, however, the head of the Dai Li also also has his fair share of crimes to answer for. Long Fang is single-handedly responsible for transforming the Earth Kingdom capital of Ba Sing Se into a dystopian police state. His agents ruthlessly capture anyone disrupting the false image of peace and security he wishes to project, and his victims are subjected to horrific brainwashing techniques used as forced re-education. Ba Sing Se remains a peaceful, orderly utopia. When his actions are exposed to King Kue, Long Feng compounds his guilt by attempting to hide the evidence of his wrongdoings, and even of the Fire Nation invasion he'd been seeking to keep from becoming public knowledge. When Princess Azula infiltrates the palace, Long Feng foolishly conspires with her to overthrow the king. His crimes against the state and against the people he'd sworn to serve demand a harsh sentence. Long Feng deserves a life sentence in prison, far away from the capital and the influence of his Dai Li minions. There is justice in Ba Sing Se. Let's ensure that Long Feng gets that message. Now, this this court is aware that the Fire Nation's prison system is really no better, which is something to keep in mind when we discuss Hama. Decades of imprisonment and torture are what allowed the waterbender to master the forbidden art of controlling another living being through their blood, known as bloodbending. Every full moon, Hama uses this power to exact revenge on the people of the Fire Nation, forcing them to follow her commands and trap themselves inside a prison of her own making beneath a nearby mountain. Hama's mastery of bloodbending renders her an immediate danger to those around her and has already been shown to make it impossible to imprison her by conventional methods. Thus, we believe that she should have her bending removed and also receive a life sentence for her actions. At her age, she won't be serving a sentence for very long, but we see little to no chance for rehabilitation here. When you've gone as far into horror movie territory as Hama clearly has, that option is off the table. We return now to the ranks of the Fire Nation forces to consider a less sinister, but no less deadly, pair of criminals. Mei and Tai Li stand accused of aiding Princess Azula in her pursuit of the Avatar and her infiltration of the Earth Kingdom. Both have assaulted the gang and those supporting them on multiple occasions, including a group of Kyoshi warriors whose identities they then steal as a means of gaining entry into the Imperial Palace of Ba Sing Se. We are the Earth King's humble servants. They assist Azula in launching a coup against the Earth Kingdom throne before carelessly retreating to the Fire Nation to engage in some criminal mischief on Ember Island. There's a certain Fire Nation admiral who will assuredly be demanding material compensation for that particular escapade. May and Tai Li do finally turn against Azula at the Boiling Rock prison, leading to their arrest and brief imprisonment by the Fire Nation. But this court questions if their immediate release at the end of the war was maybe too lenient for them. 
And admittedly, each of them, and Tylee especially, can claim that Azula threatened them into doing her dirty work. But this plea bargain will not absolve them completely of any responsibility. We recommend a sentence of community service for both May and Tylee, to give them time to reflect on the consequences of their actions and the opportunity to make amends in more honorable service than what they found under their tyrannical former friend. We see less hope of rehabilitation in the bounty hunter known as Combustion Man. This powerful firebender has menaced Aang and his friends on multiple occasions with his signature form of bending. This combustion bending is volatile and difficult to control, with the potential to cause serious harm even to the wielder, as well as extensive property damage. This is very much evidenced in Combustion Man's assaults on the gang, particularly at the Western Air Temple, where he refuses to stop attacking them, even when ordered to by his former employer, Prince Zuko. Had he survived this encounter, this court would have recommended the removal of Combustion Man's bending to eliminate the threat he poses to himself and to those around him. But. You know, he is dead. The actions of this combustion bending assassin bring to mind that we must also call to the stand the new Fire Lord, Zuko. The Fire Nation's prince has made great strides in overcoming the abusive conditioning of his father by rejecting the imperialistic designs of his nation in favor of peace, but we just can't overlook the numerous criminal actions that he undertook along his lengthy road to redemption. Zuko relentlessly pursued the Avatar and his companions for many weeks, and also hired bounty hunters like Combustion Man to achieve his goal. I want you to find him. End him. During his time in exile in the Earth Kingdom, Zuko also robbed multiple civilians, using his blue spirit persona to conceal his identity. During the coup on the Earth Kingdom, Zuko sided with his sister Azula and the events that led to the temporary death of the Avatar and the fall of Ba Sing Se. We must also note his occasionally reckless use of firebending, as well as his callous disregard for the property of others in the company of Azula and her friends. Now, the court does recognize that Fire Lord Zuko has already been punished substantially by the Fire Nation under his father, as both he and his uncle Iroh had been banished and threatened with imprisonment for their alleged treasonous actions. However, we also believe that it would be a strong diplomatic gesture for the Fire Lord to provide financial compensation to those he wronged while in the Earth Kingdom, as well as to personally assist in the restoration of the Kingdom's government following Azula's disruptive coup. Aang and his friends may be willing to let bygones be bygones, but forgiveness from an avatar isn't going to pay back the theft of a valuable ostrich horse. That's rough, buddy, but that's how it is. One of Zuko's more notable heroic moments comes in, bringing our attention to another criminal in need of sentencing. Yon Ra, a previous commander of the Fire Nation's Southern Raiders, has had a simple but devastating impact on the lives of two of the Avatar's closest friends. Fire Lord Azulon had ordered the systematic eradication of all the waterbenders in the Southern Water Tribe, and Yon Ra's Southern Raiders were at the forefront of this initiative. He personally murdered Katara and Sokka's mother, who gave her life to protect her daughter from facing death at the hands of the Fire Nation. It's me. Take me as your prisoner. Several years later, Katara tracks down Yonra and confronts him over his action, only to find the sad old man living in a miserable retirement. Katara ultimately decides that Yonra is too pathetic to kill and that she can find the closure she's looking for without resorting to murder. This court finds that this once merciless commander is already suffering considerably under the thumb of his demanding mother, and so we can think of no more suitable punishment for Yonra than a life sentence under house arrest. There are times, like this, when nothing the legal system can concoct could ever be as damning as a dysfunctional family. We will be sorting out the consequences of a familial dysfunction for the remainder of this session, as our last three criminals all come to us from the Fire Nation's royal family. Much like with Zuko, no one would argue that Iroh is not a hero, both as a guide and mentor to his wayward nephew, and as a commander of the White Lotus. With that said, the people of Bossing Se will never forget the notorious dragon of the West who besieged their city for 600 days and became the first person in history to breach their outer wall. This campaign would ultimately be the catalyst for Iroh's rejection of the Fire Nation's pursuit of conquest, following the death of his son on the front lines. In the years since, Iroh's become an admirable force for good in the world, and has been a key player in ending the Hundred Year War despite facing banishment and prison time in the Fire Nation under his power-mad brother. We believe it only appropriate that Iroh aid in the restoration of Ba Sing Se and continue to serve in an advisory role for his nephew and the Avatar. Iroh can thus put his decades of experience as a leader to good use and serve as a role model for the younger generation. Even once feared military commanders can find true happiness in a life of serving others. And we don't just mean serving tea. It will take far longer to rehabilitate Iroh's niece, Princess Azula. Fully indoctrinated into her father's brutal worldview and desire for dominion, Azula served as an eager instrument of the former Fire Lord's conquests. 
She's toppled the Earth Kingdom government from within by impersonating Kyoshi warriors and seizing control of the Dai Li, attacked the Avatar and his friends on numerous occasions, and even wounded Aang so severely that he was on the brink of death. Azula has been no less of a destructive force among her allies, tormenting her brother, uncle, and friends with constant emotional and psychological abuse and coercing Mei and Tai Li to fall in line with her schemes using threats of violence. It's clear that Azula revels in causing pain in any way she can, but this court hesitates to strip her of her bending and condemning her to a life sentence in spite of her many crimes. We recognize that Azula is herself a victim of abuse at her father's hands. You can't treat me like Zuko! As evidenced by her deteriorating mental state during the arrival of Sozin's Comet. The stress of being abandoned by her friends and advisors while also having her father confer upon her the title of Fire Lord left her on the verge of mental breakdown, and defeat at the hands of Katara and Zuko pushed her over the edge. We therefore sentence Azula to at least five years in a mental facility with regular evaluative therapy sessions to allow her to work through her trauma and struggles with anger management and antisocial behavior. After her release, she'll additionally be expected to assist her brother and uncle in the Fire Nation's efforts to repair the damage it wrought during the Hundred Year War. Azula's previous attempts at integrating herself into ordinary civilian life have gone quite poorly, but we can hope that one day she can go five minutes without ranting about world conquest. We will dominate the Earth! That brings us finally to the greatest criminal on today's docket. Ozai might not have begun the Hundred Year War that wiped out an entire nation and devastated all the others, but he's continued the work of his father and grandfather in violently asserting the supremacy of the Fire Nation over the world. Throughout his reign, Ozai's operated as a dictator, jailing dissidents, maintaining support for the war through misinformation and propaganda, and pressuring his subordinates, including his own family, to succeed at any cost. His years of abusing his son Zuko are well documented, and as previously discussed, he's also at fault for encouraging Azula's ruthless acts of violence. Let us also not forget that Ozai guaranteed his ascension to the throne by murdering his father, displacing Iroh as the rightful heir, and ensuring that the Fire Nation would only be brought to heel with his eventual defeat. That's never good, and that defeat has come at a tremendous cost to the Earth Kingdom especially, which has had to see its force burned to ashes in the wake of Ozai's offensive. Avatar Aang has already removed Ozai's bending to remove the threat he poses to the world at large, but we order that he should be additionally serving a life sentence in prison, given the severity of his many crimes. This is in light of the sensitive political nature of sentencing a ruler like Ozai, who has many loyal followers who would likely rise up in retaliation were he to be executed. Granted, they might do that anyway, but that, as they say, is a story for another time.